So my name is John Fernandez. I'm a professor in the Department of Architecture. Uh, I've been at MIT now for 16 years. Uh, I was class of 85 here, uh, undergraduate in architecture as well. I took most of my classes though in civil engineering. Um, the work that I do has been with materials for buildings, for the built environment. M the, most of the first, the first half of the work that I did here at MIT had to do with specific materials for buildings, uh, resource efficient buildings, green buildings, a lot of technical work, lab work, uh, new materials and new assemblies. In the last seven years or so, I've been taking that work and looking at a, at a much larger scale, and that is what is the built environment made of in a very holistic, large-scale way. So that translated has translated into the work in the resource requirements for cities. And that is the field that we call urban metabolism. There are many, many different ways to look at cities, sociologically, politically, historically, culturally. Um, and cities have been very, very well studied. Um, but they have been less well studied in terms of the res resources that are required to run them. So to, re to run their economies, to uh, deliver critical resources to the population, to um, run infrastructure in a way that um, there's a certain level of provision of water, energy, materials, food. And uh, urban metabolism is the field of study that accounts for those flows. The results of urban metabolism, or at least the outcomes, are intended to be an understanding of the resource intensity. So per capita, per person, or per activity, economic sector, or per urban infrastructure, transportation, what, a, what is the intensity of resources that are applied to that urban activity? What will it take to reduce the kinds of resource intensities that, that we have today, but continuing to, to grow and expand the amenities and the livability of our cities? Cities have been studied, urban economies have been studied um, very deeply. Um, their history and their culture have been studied. But now that cities, most of the population in the world lives in cities, and it's pretty clear that we're hitting up against some challenges uh, for resources um, and climate change, we are looking at cities as um, the sites of the, the vast majority of the of consumption and production, but also as the places for solutions for the future. So getting to a point where technologies, um, policies, design strategies can address large-scale social issues requires that we understand what the resource intensity of these places are, what resources are required to run, the, to run these economies. Because I think the, at the same time that there are opportunities to, to try to target reductions, there's also opportunities to do things in different ways, to develop businesses, um, to develop uh, business models, to deliver the amenities that people want, but doing it with um, emerging technologies and emerging design strategies.